Okay, I'll call the order of this committee the whole meeting of the Council of Town Talking Shores and say good evening to everyone, uh, all members and everyone who is watching us on the live feed this evening. And uh, we're glad that you're with us. The second item is disclosure of pecuniary interest. I'll ask any member if they have one of those I'd like to declare. Seeing none, of course, you can do so anytime if you need to. We have no additions or deletions or amendments. We have no open forum. We have no delegations. We have no public meeting. <laughs> that moves us on to report of municipal officers. And um, the first one, 7.2, general government staff report on the reappointment of the integrity commissioner. Clark. And thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor. Council appointed uh, Mr. Harold Elston as the Municipal Integrity Commissioner in April 2018. The current contract with Mr. Elston expires at the end of this year, December 31st. The contract provides an option to renew for an additional two-year period on the same terms and pricing. So the background to the report outlines that a countywide RFP process was undertaken in 2018. And the report highlights the fact that the County of Bruce has recently reappointed Mr. Elston for a two-year term. During this term, Mr. Elson has conducted two investigations for the municipality since he was appointed and has provided advice to individual council members on seven occasions. Mr. Elson met with council at the beginning of this term of council and will be providing an annual report. The financial impact to provide these services is provided within the report. In summary, this report recommends Mr. Elson's contract be renewed for an additional two years at the same rate, being $250 an hour plus expenses with no retainer fee. Thank you, Linda. We have a recommendation. I'll read it, then we can take any questions or comments. It's recommended the council authorize a bylaw to reappoint Harold G. Elston as integrity commissioner for the term commencing January 1, 2020 to December 31, 2020. Questions or comments from members of the committee? Vice Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I just did have a question um, about the financial component. Well, first of all, I wanted to say about Mr. Elston, I found our, our training session very worthwhile in the beginning days of this term. And, uh, you know, Mr. Elston's an experienced municipal lawyer. He, uh, you know, he's, he's bound by rules and regulations set down by the province, obviously, and, and, um, and, and rep represents us. Um, I, I think he's done a, you know, commendable job, and I, I'm, uh, I'm certainly going to be supporting his recommendation this evening. I just want to introduce you to the clerk. Um, the investigations component, Linda, could you just provide just a quick breakdown of the twenty-six twenty-five and the six thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars and seventy-five cents? So what those two costs represented? Certainly, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the in Integrity Commissioner undertook two investigations um, during his term, his recent appointment. So the one investigation um, had a total expense of $2,625. And the second investigation had an expense of $6,992. And, 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 and the $6,992, which, which one does that represent again? Um, it represented the report that was on the most, uh, I think it was the September meeting agenda. So it was the most recent report that you had read from the uh, integrity commissioner. Okay. Can we talk about the, that report this evening in open session, uh, the contents of that report? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't have that report before me. Um, I, I wasn't actually prepared to answer questions about specific reports, but. Well, we're okay to talk about this cost this evening in public, are we? Certainly, it's not a it's I mean, not you know, a closed the meeting. To make, I guess is that you know there were no findings. I think our mayor represented us very well. Um, yeah, the, these investigations that took place back February, March, I believe, and I just wanted to uh, you know thank our mayor for for the job he did with 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 conducting those meetings with it, which resulted in investigation. I, I I just want to make a point that you know people have every right. People have every right. To, uh, to file a, a grievance with the integrity commissioner. I get that, and uh, that's why it was set up. If people think there's wrongdoing around the council table, uh, people are, are, are welcome, free to do that. But I just want to say this, that, and I, I can speak for myself, I hope I can speak for all the members around the council table. I think we do act with, with, with integrity. We follow the rules and, and regulations that set down through our procedural bylaws we live play within the rules i i have uh 
never made a decision in my six years in council that I felt a need to be investigated by the integrity commissioner. Um, perhaps there may be a case in the future where an investigation takes place where we are guilty. But in this case, I want to commend the mayor for the job he did. That's a $7,000 expenditure to our taxpayers. And uh, people have every right to file, I get that. But I just want to let them know, the taxpayers know that there, it comes with a cost and it, it, this is not free. It's not a free service. But, uh, and, I, and I don't want to cross the line and I'm not saying people don't have the right they do. But uh, these, these investigations do have a cost, Mr. Mayor, to our taxpayer. Thank you, thank you for your comments. Uh, are there further comments uh, to this report? Recommendation, okay, seeing none, all in favor. That's scary. All right, then that moves us on to the second one, infrastructure and development, and a staff report uh, on road construction and model home agreement with Launch Property Group and the Director of Infrastructure and Development. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor, I just also want to acknowledge that Jay is here to answer any questions that come up on these uh, these reports that I'm bringing forward this uh, this evening. <laughs> So the Launch Property Group is looking to develop lands north of High Street on Grenville, and this agreement will allow the construction of a model home while staff work with them to um, finalize the engineering and staging of the construction works for the infrastructure on Grenville Street. This type of agreement is an example of how town staff work with the development industry to help with their cash flow to encourage development while securing the infrastructure that we need for the development to uh, continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a recommendation. I'll read it. Uh, it's recommended that council authorize a bylaw to enter into an agreement with Launch Property Group Incorporated for the construction of a portion of Grenville Street services and a model home. Questions or comments from members of the committee? The deputy mayor. Oh, you're still on mute there. Thank you. And th through you, Mr. Mayor, to our director, um, Amanda. So between um, High Street and Clarendon, I don't believe there are there is any uh, sewer or sanitary in that area, correct? So you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. That's part of the infrastructure that's needed to allow this development. And to will it be kind of like the other end of Grenville where they'll only go part way down the street or will they go all the way to Clarendon? They are... Their development goes to Lansdowne, so they have to connect to Lansdowne, but there's another development on the east side of Grenville that we're working with uh, staff and the development charges to make the entire project happen at, at one time. So that hope would be a future stub all the way down to High Street. And then what about the last sec? Could you tell me from Clarendon to, to the creek, is there sanitary in that section or is that... Um, separate as well i don't know the answer to that off the top of my head but i can find out if that's uh when that's planned to be installed thank you very much jay just came live there jay do you have any answers to that question no i was just i couldn't read the uh, the lot fabric before it popped up prematurely came on here so okay all right uh are there further uh, comments at uh, the vice deputy Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's just uh, in a, a little bit off topic, but if you allow me to ask this question, and I had an opportunity to speak to the, uh, the Rotary Club at lunchtime today, and one of the questions came up, and it's housing related. Uh, we're adding new new housing to our to our uh, inventory here, and I, it, it, Amanda, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Amanda, Amanda, they, it was just a question about sewage capacity, and I know it's a little bit off topic, here, Mr. Mayor, but I think it's maybe an opportune time to ask it. The uh, Rotarians asked today, they know of a lot of housing subdivisions being planned and a lot of new housing stock and commercial coming on online. And, and one of the questions today was, how are we with water and sewer? I was able to answer the water question, um, I think pretty efficiently, but uh, you know, the, 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 the sewage component, could you just quickly, uh, I, I, I talked a little bit to the group today about the, the uh, Southampton sewage plant. When's that study being done again and, and uh, the completion date and how are we with sewer capacity in Saugain Shores? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, there's a water wastewater master plan that you will see before Christmas. Uh, that's just being finalized now by BM Ross. 
but the Southampton Class EA for the wastewater treatment is the same. It's being done, um, it's close to completion as well. That's the one that has the different alternatives. We've done the public meeting for that one. Uh, when it comes to sewage capacity, we are, are fine in, in Port Elgin and, and the growth continue no problem. There are areas in Southampton that have restrictions based on sewer capacity and pump station capacity. So there's 90% um, of the area is good for sanitary and there's some areas that have some restrictions that would need work to be done before they could develop. Thanks, Amanda. And the question is really about Southampton, how we're doing with capacity. So you've, you've answered that. Thanks for allowing me to ask that question, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Any other questions? I don't see any, so you've heard the recommendation. All in favor? That's carried. All right, then that moves us on to communications and petitions for information. There are three items there. Does anyone have any questions with regard to or comments with regard to any of those? So, oh, uh, Councillor Mike. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, yeah, just a question regarding the communication from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing letter. So uh, you forwarded that letter on to all of us last week and, uh, and I read it and it wasn't immediately clear to me what it meant. And uh, so I appreciate the fact that Amanda, our Director of uh, Public Works, took the time to, to write a report on that and to uh, clarify what the new um, community benefits charges are and, and how it applies. I was a bit confused how that dovetails in with our current community, um, our development charges bylaw. And uh, she, she did a quite a good job. So I wanted to thank her for that. And just just for my own clarification, and I wonder if Amanda could, uh, could maybe chime in a little bit. Uh, we can do one or the other, but can we do both? And uh, um, it seems the, the jest I got of her letter was the preference of staff. And I think it's a good idea would be to stick with our current development charges by law because we've just done a lot of work on that and and it was recently updated I think it's about two years into its five-year cycle and uh, but can we can we move in with a uh, community benefit charges uh, for some instances and use development charges for others or do we have one or the other thanks Should I put that to the manager of planning Okay, I guess that's me. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, it's certainly there. Uh, it's an interesting thought experiment because this is new for everybody. We're not totally sure. I'm, I think we could do both, uh, but they cannot duplicate collection on any of the services or charges that we would do. So uh, the CBC, uh, as they're calling it, is very limited. It would have to be on only developments greater than or five stories or higher or 10 units or more. We don't get a lot of those. Um, don't have any buildings greater than five stories that are being talked about now. So very limited application and we can't duplicate. Okay, that clear? All right, thanks for that answer. Jay, any other questions with regard to any of the other items of correspondence? Don't see any, so that moves us then on to reports of department heads and we have three of those. And the first one is an information report uh, on planning activity and uh, I guess, Jay, do you have any, uh, want to make any comments to that uh, report or Amanda? Sure, I'll just give a, a little introduction. Um, through Though Jay was working remotely this year, uh, they still went through many files. And a lot of the building that we're seeing in Sogging Shores is from previously approved draft plans of subdivisions. So this is moving on to registration. And these bu the building that you see now is sort of an effect of those agreements that uh, council has been asked to sign. Um, we do think this growth is going to continue and we're going to see lots of building activity just based on the number of pre-consultations that we've had in the last couple of months, as well as um, the applications that we know are sitting at the county now. So this trend of, of busyness is going to continue. Yes. Are there questions or comments uh, to this report? The Vice Deputy Mayor. Well, thank you. I just want to commend Jay. I, I like Councilor Matt. I think it was a this is a this is a really good report, Jay, and you put a lot of time and effort into it. And I find these reports uh, the last few weeks very helpful. Updates from staff. It, it keeps us in the loop. It answers a lot of questions we have, at least I have, and uh, I'm sure others. And so I just want to thank you for the time and effort you put into this. And these these updates are 
are really appreciated. One question I had, Jay, was when you talk about um, reducing the application burden, um, I think that's that's a good thing anytime we can reduce the burden for landowners. Um, can you explain that just a little bit when you talk about reducing the application burden? Well, I mean, uh, from me, it just means uh, if someone wanted to um, develop, build a house even on their property and their bylaw was so restrictive and it didn't allow them to build on the property the way they wanted, they'd have to either get a minor variance or rezone it. We've, over the last few years, been trying to monitor that sort of activity, trying to understand what uh, fits for the community, build in amendments to our bylaw, like we did just a couple months ago, that allow for greater flexibility on building location. And that, in our my head, uh, means fewer applications for, say, a minor variance on a side yard setback. Okay. I think in any way we can make things easier, I think it's, it's a good thing. Thanks, Jane. Ideally, we don't. We wouldn't receive minor variances on the same issue over and over and over again. When we start to see them build up, we try to change our documents to accommodate for that. And I think our staff and our committee of adjustment and council have done a good job of doing that. To, and that's borne out in the fact that we don't have to deal with quite as many of those applications anymore. So uh, it's a reflection of, of the good work that's been done by all. Are there further comments? Uh, to this report, I don't see any. So thanks very much for that. Then that moves us then on to the next one, an information report on Parkland Dedication Development Charges and Community Benefits Authority. And uh, uh, Councilor Mayotte already spoke uh, briefly to that. I don't know, uh, Jay, do you have anything you wanted to uh, speak to with regard to the report or should we just go to questions? I have nothing to add. I think it's pretty straightforward unless there is uh, some question. Are there any questions? I think it's clear. I'm glad I would just reiterate what the councillor said. I appreciate you uh, clarifying this because it's a little bit complicated uh, and uh, the release from the ministry uh, and what I've heard from the ministry hasn't been entirely straightforward. So your interpretation of what's come out is much appreciated and helps us to understand uh, what this means for us. So thank you for that. The final uh, report of department heads is uh, an information report on, on a tourism update and the director of strategic initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the intent, intent of this report is to circle back on our vision and strategic goals for publicly funded tourism service. As you can see in the update, staff are advancing with our budget and service delivery planning for 2021. Our preparation includes reviewing service agreements, considering potential partnerships, supporting community event organizers, and planning for marketing and promotion. Today, during the Mayor's Task Force on Economic Recovery, it was evident that our plan to support community event organizers will have value. Shanna Reed, our Supervisor of Tourism, and the rest of the Strategic Initiatives team are looking forward to advancing tourism moving forward, and especially looking forward to supporting our local businesses and local events um, during the uncertain time of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions or comments uh, to the report? The Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Um, Jessica, can you elaborate a little bit on the meeting that Shauna had with the community groups? Give us a little background on that. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, absolutely, I'd be happy to do that. Um, so Shanna had a, a very beneficial conversation with a number of community event organizers, service clubs, um, other nonprofit groups included. She is right now following up with groups that were unable to attend the virtual meeting. Um, and if there's groups out there that uh, we haven't been able to connect with, we would welcome that conversation. So that was an opportunity for Shanna to learn from our community event organizers um, what they might need moving forward, where they have challenges, and how we as tourism service and as the municipality, how we can support them, especially through this uncertain time. And um, we've learned a great deal through those conversations. Um, Shanna's heard about the need for a workshop on grant writing, as an example. She's heard about um, the need for some support with uh, COVID precautions, what makes an event safe. Um, and so it's been a very promising, I'll say. It's, it's looking uh, very positive moving forward, and we're learning a lot. So very much still in the research phase for the remainder of 2020, and looking forward to advancing even more in 21. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Mayan. Did the deputy mayor want to uh, have a, a second shot at that? Oh, I don't know. So, I just want to, uh, as a follow-up, oh, sorry, thank you, Councillor Mayette. As a follow-up to that, Jessica, um, grant writing is, is a huge piece. 
Uh, we know how many grants we write in for the community itself through our municipal staff and any way that we can help uh, community groups do that uh, will be better. I know uh, Councilor Schreider and the ball group will probably be looking at writing some grants to try and to uh, find some funds for the Lamont Sports Park as we go along. So anything that we can do to ease that and bring more money into our community is great. So I look forward to seeing how that pans out. Thank you. Okay, now Councilor Mayer. Thank you. Thank you for your patience there. Um, Jessica, just one question that came to mind for me was as we transition away from the current model, that being the Chamber of Commerce administering our tourism budget, um, Cheryl Grace and I, or Councillor Grace and I are the, uh, I think she's the primary and I'm the secondary representative on the Chamber Board of Directors. Uh, do you see us not having to or not being eligible to have those seats on the Chamber Board at, going forward as, uh, as we don't have a stake in their business anymore? I'll, uh, I'll field that one. Uh, the uh, striking committee is uh, um, considering that and, uh, and via the clerk's department uh, reaching out to the Chamber of Commerce to discuss uh, what to do. So you, council will be seeing um, recommendation from us based on consultation with the chamber um, in the not too distant future, frankly, uh, very shortly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, further questions or comments, Vice Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, uh, I just want to say, Jessica, thank thank you for uh, for this update again. I think these these updates are terrific, and there's some really good things in your report. Uh, that service agreement uh, with the Southampton Arts Center to operate the Southampton Visitor Center that you pulled off this past year, I thought was was an excellent move, and I only hope that perhaps you know you can continue your good work and and take a look at the Port Augen Visitor Center and see if there's something like that that might be able to be uh, struck or uh, arranged for. I, so I think that was a really, really positive move with Southampton um, Art Center and a uh, great initiative. And you know, another comment in here about the extended tourism season, I look forward to seeing that. I think that uh, there's great potential in Saugeen Shores uh, for four seasons. I know our winters can be a little brutal, but there, there's lots of opportunities there in January, February, March too, that we you know, could potentially be looked at. So. I like I like that goal in your in your report, and uh, I, I I just also wanted to point out another point I want to thank you for, and it's the last line in your report, a comment and a question, but a tourism marketing plan will be developed by staff, and uh, considering past experience and current re current research, and thank you for that, Jessica. I think that we have a very qualified staff that can pull off some. I know some more there's work involved, but. When I read that, I was particularly pleased to see that staff are going to be carrying that out internally. So thank you for that. A um, question I did have about the um, tourism marketing plan is uh, timing. Are you thinking in the in the first second quarter? What what are you thinking for timing, Jessica? Three, Mr. Mayor. I would like to see this come forward in the first quarter uh, for a marketing plan in relation to tourism. I will share today um, with the mayor's task force on economic recovery. There was lots of discussion on uh, supporting local. We know that. How do we support our local businesses through economic recovery? And my team has already quickly started batting around some ideas that connect into this tourism marketing plan. Um, let's let's remind people to to spend to. Um, their tourism dollars or their budgets or their vacations in their backyard. Uh, so there's there's some of this conversation already happening and I hope to have something um, packaged up and formalized uh, to bring back to council in first quarter. Perfect, and, and Mr. Mayor, I've always felt, and Jessica, I, I've always felt and said this in the past, that uh, the the uh, economic development and tourism uh, fit together like a glove and I'm most supportive of this change, I always have been. And uh, I just want to commend you for this report. It's a good report, thanks. You. Are there further comments to the report? I would just say that I think that uh, in agreeing with Vice Deputy Mayor, this was a, 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 the right move. And what demonstrates the fact it was the right move is our, it's given us the um, tools in our tool chest that we need to respond to the situation we're in right now. Now, with the municipality playing the role that it should play in economic development uh, and tourism uh, as the leader, in the community as, as taking that responsibility for economic development and, and having it here in house, we're now able to lead the charge in responding to the greatest economic uh, crisis that we've faced in our community and in the world in our lifetime. Uh, and that's what we should be doing. We have the money and the resources internally to do it. And I have to say, 
and Jess referenced the task force a couple of times today. I've been meeting with them for obviously for the last several months and just today again, uh, the work that staff is doing uh, on that front that Heather Hyde uh, and, and Shanna and Jess are doing and Dana on that front is really outstanding. I mean, it's incredible work. I, it's like the, the work that they're putting out is just a lot of work and hitting the street. And then, the, you know, Heather Hyde is just, she's on the ground talking to every business in this town. She knows the lay of the land better than anybody. Uh, and she's making, and she's using that knowledge to make recommendations that are going to make the, they're going to help businesses get through this crisis. Uh, so, um, so we're very fortunate to have a, a process, I think that's working, but more importantly, staff that are working well for us in that department. Uh, so uh, thank you to them and uh, I'm glad for that success and hope that we can continue to be successful going forward. So that brings us to the end of the Committee of the Whole agenda. And um, we'll do announcements by members and the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanna bring this to Council's attention. Every October, Children's Aid Societies across Ontario raise awareness about the important role that individuals and communities play in supporting vulnerable children, youth, and families through the Provincial Dress Purple Day campaign. The campaign is more important than ever since the COVID-19 pandemic has created additional stressors for families and in some cases has increased the risk for well-being and safety of children and youth. This year, the Dress Purple Day will take place on Tuesday, October 27th. And we have a council meeting on Monday, the 26th. And I'll be sending some information out to council and hoping that we can get everybody to dress purple. I know purple is a very important color in our community, uh, not only for cystinosis, but for this very, very important uh, day in October. So I'll send some information out, but just remember, October 27th, 2020 is dress purple day. All right, thank you, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just mentioned earlier, I had the opportunity to speak to the uh, Port Elgin Rotary at lunchtime today. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Port Elgin Rotary, Southampton Rotary, other service clubs. You know, they just continue to amaze me. They had a most successful uh, pie sale as part of Pumpkin Fest. And uh, the only regret I had was I only bought one pie. I should have bought three or four or five because it was great pies. But, you know, they, 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 they donate to, the, you know, the, the skate park, the Rotary Way Trail, the the uh, Rotary Hall. I mean, over the past, the Rotary Club have donated so many projects in our community, as have Southampton Rotary and other uh, Rotary and other service clubs in our community. So, just to really a thank you to uh, all of our service clubs in in town during these difficult times. You just keep on, you know, fundraising and keep on giving. And I just want to say a big thank you to uh, all those volunteers out there. All right. Thank you, Councillor Schreier. Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I just wanted to mention that I had a tour of the NII on Thursday afternoon uh, with the director, Bruce Wallace. And um, it, was, uh, it was a great tour. Um, very impressed with the building. It's beautiful. Um, I can't wait for the time when it will be able to be better used, but they're already trying to come up with ways to uh, make it available for use in with small groups. Um, and there are a lot of exciting in initiatives that are really going to help uh, our community. So a um, lot to look forward to. Thank you, Councillor Carr. Nothing tonight? No, nothing tonight, thanks. Okay, Councillor Mayat. Yes, uh, just one thing kind of uh, leading on with Councillor Grace's tour of the NII. I also went to the NII and I discovered that I had virtually been there already. The Huron Shores Hospice Virtual Gala Fundraiser was hosted at the NII by and, and with the staff from the NII. And it was very well, well done on the 3rd of October. And they, uh, I believe they surpassed their goal, yet their, their fundraising is ongoing for a very important initiative with that being uh, to add an extra bed at the Huron Shores Hospice. And so much so that the fundraising is still ongoing. You can still go on and buy a 50-50 ticket. The tickets are available until the 15th. The draw is on the 15th of October, which is day after tomorrow. Or yeah, day after tomorrow. Yeah. So if you go on to uh, HuronShoresHospice.ca, uh, you can uh, buy your tickets online. And I encourage you to do so. There's a guaranteed 
$2,000 prize to be had there. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. Um, for myself, um, I was uh, pleased last Tuesday uh, to have the opportunity to hand out the first round of business recognition awards uh, on behalf of the town of Sogging Shores, but really on behalf of the people of Sogging Shores to businesses who have done an outstanding job of pivoting and adapting to the COVID-19 challenge. These businesses were nominated by people within the community, their own customers, uh, and um, I can tell you, having heard from some of them, that uh, found it a real honor and a boost to the morale in their, in their, uh, among their staff and in their business to receive these awards. I'm just going to read the list of, of uh, businesses that I recognize: uh, the Walker House, the Highview, the Offshore Bakery, Learn Fit, Top Performance, the Queen's Hotel, uh, and Aunt Mabel's Country Kitchen and Motel. And uh, um, each one of those obviously are uh, excellent businesses in our community and well deserving of the recognition and I'm very pleased to hear that several of you, my colleagues, are planning to uh, uh, attend other businesses across our community and uh, hand out sil similar awards in the coming weeks. Uh, we have received a tremendous response to this uh, program, several nominations uh, from uh, before businesses across our entire community and uh, we're very pleased to recognize them and the message is uh, that uh, it's safe to go to businesses in our community. Our, business, our businesses in the town of Sogging Shores have all done a tremendous job adapting to COVID-19. And if you live in this community uh, and you're looking to go out for a bite to eat or to go to a retail shop or to um, go to the bakery or the grocery store, you can feel confident that um, it's safe and that those businesses have taken the steps they need to take to keep us all safe. Uh, so um, congratulations to those businesses and looking forward to seeing more uh, given out in the coming weeks. So with that, I'll ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councilor Schreider, all in favor. The Committee of the Whole stands adjourned. Do you need a break or should we just do regular council? All right, let's roll. Uh, give me half a sec here. Okay. Okay. I'd like to call to order this regular council meeting. Uh, and the second item on the agenda is disclosures of pecuniary interest. Does anyone have one of those they'd like to declare? Seeing none, of course, you can do that anytime if you need to. We have no additions or deletions. We have no public meeting. That moves on to adoption of the minutes. And I have a resolution that council adopt the minutes of the council meeting of September 28, 2020, and note and file the minutes of the committee, the whole meeting of September 28, 2020, as presented. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by Grace, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Questions or comments to those minutes? Councilor Mayette. Just one question, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if um, if it's accurate or not, but I, I read the minutes, and in there, it, it, on the discussion around the Kolb Bridge, um, it, it indicated, or it seemed to indicate that the mo the uh, recommendation was to temporarily close the bridge, when I believe um, what the, the recommendation from staff was to permanently close the bridge. And I just didn't want uh, anybody to read that after the fact and uh, and come to the conclusion that uh, the recommendation was to somehow temporarily close it and do some sort of remediation and then open it again. I think uh, just, just the way it read, and I'm not sure if that's uh, accurate or not, but that's the impression that I took from reading it. Can you just clarify that, the director? Sure, thank you. And through you, uh, no, the recommendation was to temporarily close it and then go through the class EA process. And if that process um, has it rebuilt, then it would reopen at that time. But the recommendation in my report was originally to have it temporarily closed, just like McEwing Bridge. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions or comments uh, to the minutes? I don't see any. All in favor? It's Gary. All right, that moves us then on to reports of the Committee of the Whole, and the first is General Government Report regarding the 2019 financial statements. And I have a resolution that Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the General Government Report dated September 28, 2020, recommending that Council accepts the 2019 audited financial statements as presented by BDO. Question, is there a mover and seconder? 
Moved by Schreider, seconded by Carr. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. That moves us then on to the second report, which is an infrastructure development report regarding Bruce Road 25 detour, waste management master plan implementation and 2020 bridge and culvert inspections. And I have a resolution that council of the town of Saugeen Shores adopts the infrastructure and development report dated September 28, 2020, recommending the following. One, authorize the entering into an, of an easement agreement with Barry's Construction and Insulation Limited for the construction and maintenance of a detour route on the Ridge Street Extension and Bruce Street Extension, as shown on the Director of Infrastructure and Development's report dated September 28, 2020, and to direct staff to prepare the necessary documents to finalize the easements. Two, approve sole sourcing of GM Blue Plan to proceed with the design of the landfill entrance and environmental assessment for the landfill expansion as recommended in the waste management master plan with funding through the 2020 budget and landfill expansion reserve and three receive the 2020 bridge and culprit inspection report prepared by GM blue plan engineering limited dated September 20 2020 September 2020 and defer the recommendation to temporary clo temporarily close the coal bridge pending a public meeting on the subject council will, will revisit the matter following the public meeting is there a mover and seconder Moved by Mayette, seconded by Grace. Questions or comments to the resolution? Uh, Councilor Schreider. Um, thank you, and through you. Um, for Amanda, I guess, just with number one with regards to the detour uh, route, um, I'd sent an email last week, met with a couple of residents along there as well, um, especially along the Ridge Street detour, I think we spoke about. Um, it, it, is it possible for staff to look at um, some other measures that would be taken along the not the unofficial detour route? So I'll call it. So your detour detour route will come off of 25 um, and then head back up to the highway on Ivings Drive, whereas it is possible for them to continue on through and pass Pearson, uh, Pearson Street and head down to the end of Ridge Street, which would be Catherine, and then back up to Bruce Street, which which might naturally be a way that people will will take. And there's uh, very few, maybe one stop sign along that route. So I'm just asking that staff have a look at that um, to see if 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 we can uh, implement some measures that would that would help out with the traffic control there and and the speed. Yeah, we can through you, Mr. Mayor, what uh, the intention was, was to have a four way stop at Ivings and Ridge with a sign that says uh, local traffic only. So there'd be a traffic barrel at that intersection that would deter people from going straight uh, along Ridge. That was something the developer would like us to see as well. So um, there'll be many eyes on it and maintaining that, that sign there for sure. Um, along the way, what we normally would do to do stop sign analysis is see what the traffic is. So we would, we could during construction, during the detour, put a traffic counter out and see um, how many cars are going through the Ridge Street towards Catherine. That's great. I appreciate it. And then I have one more about item number two, if, if I yep. may, Mr. Mayor. You bet. Um, great. Thank you. Um, and to Amanda again, then, um, did we get a price on what the sole source for the GM Blue Plan contract would be before we approve it? So we have the budget number for 2021 from them, but we don't have that estimate for the next 10 years. That's a bit harder for them to put together, but I am expecting that this week from them. Um, the number uh, from them is 150,000 that's put into the 2021 budget that will get us through the work to get the Class EA um, next year. Um, so I guess this approval would be um, maybe Linda can help me on this one. It might be dependent upon budget approval for 2021 because that will be when this number brings uh, comes back to council as well. Are you uh, so this essentially though, Amanda, is pre-budget approval to move ahead with this agreement, right? I mean, if, it would be difficult for council to um, at budget time to withdraw support for this, which we'd already approved, right? I, uh, through you, I honestly don't know how to, to answer that. Maybe, I um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess I suppose if council, if council refuses to fund a, a project that we approved in a resolution, I suppose that would end it. But I, but um, yeah, it is a little bit, it is awkward. I don't know, the, the interim CAO has come on board, the interim CAO. Yeah, and we've done projects similar to this before where you are right, it would be pre-budget approval that we would be looking for for this project. 
Council Schreiter. Um, so just to follow up uh, through that, thank, thanks, Jane and Amanda. So what you're asking us to approve, though, is just one year for 2021 for $150,000. And then you had mentioned what the next 10 years. Are you asking permission to single source for the next 10 years without a budget figure? Maybe I'm just not clear on, on what all we're approving here tonight. Thank you. Andrew. How the Class EA process will work is that um, we would pick one consultant to carry us through the process. Uh, it can take up to 10 years to get a landfill approved. So I wouldn't uh, be recommending that we change um, consultants every year through that process. Uh, because we don't know how it's going to go, it's very hard to budget what's going to happen year to year um, and put a price to that. So I guess on this resolution, that is what I'm asking is that pre-budget approval for next year. Um, the cost estimate is $150,000 from GM Blue Plan to get us through that first stage of the Class EA. That includes archeological assessment and some environmental work, geotechnical work as well. So to be clear then, in approving this resolution, you will be pre-budget approving $150,000 expense to the 2021 budget. And, that has, and that's to enact this item too. Sorry, through, yep, through the, sure. I think that the, the resolution actually says through the 2020 budget and landfill expansion reserve. So those funds were already approved maybe in 2020? That's true, um, Amanda? That's true. So the 2021, so, so maybe that was pulled out, I guess. The, I apologize, I uh, caught off guard on this one. So 2020 budget was the entrance design. Uh, we're asking just to sole source that to GM Blue Plan. That was in the budget already. Um, I was thinking that the both pieces were in here, but it looks like the future work is not in this resolution for 2021. So I'm asking for 2020 budget to sole source to GM Blue Plan, and I'll come back to you with the numbers for the 2021 budget then. Okay, that makes sense. Is that better? So we're approving and we're approving the awarding of a contract budgeted in the 2020 budget, uh, and we will have future discussions about future expenditures as part of the 2021 budget. Okay, is that clear? Good, we made it through. Now, are there any other questions or comments? I don't see any, so I'll ask all favor. That's good. Okay, that, uh, all right, that moves us on then to reports of municipal officers and committees. And the first one is a striking committee report on electronic participation. And I have a resolution that council accept the striking committee report dated September 23, 2020, recommending the amendments to the procedural bylaw to allow members to participate electronically at future council boards and committee meetings. Questions or comments from members of council? Councilor Mayer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, the one question that I had was um, when I read the report, is it indicating that uh, in the future when uh, such a time comes that we'll be able to meet in person that we will still, say there was an instance where all of us showed up at uh, a council chamber, would we still be using the Zoom? So essentially we'd be setting up our, our tablets or uh, devices in front of us just as we are now. So we'd be uh, this would be the new format that we're looking at right now that the public would see in addition to being able to come in person. So I think what, uh, well, maybe the, uh, we'll let the clerk answer. There she is, the clerk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. At the time of writing this report, and as of this, as of this evening, we would be using Zoom meetings, but as technology progresses and we um, look into different options, that may evolve, but at this point in time, we would be using Zoom meetings. Even if we were in person? Even if we were in person. Uh, so if we're all in the room, all council members, all members of the public who wish to address council through a delegation, um, through open form, if we're all in the room, we would not use Zoom. If there was a member of the public um, or committee member or council member who needed to use Zoom, at this point in time, we would be required to use Zoom just so that we can integrate the audio and the video uh, and capture that into the live streaming. All right. That seems like to me a good thing to do it. As you have indicated before, 
the public response to this format has been mm -hmm. positive. So uh, if that's the response, then we should continue doing it. Thanks. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, a question, I guess, to, um, to Linda. Um, the financial implications talk about um, that any required upgrades to IT equipment would be funded from the 2020 budget. Um, so is that something that we're, are we assessing that right now and getting going on that? Or are we, are we waiting for more information? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, at this point in time, we're still assessing. Uh, we have not picked any product that we would recommend uh, to use other than Zoom. The um, software program that we use to create the agendas may be creating a, a feature that we could purchase that would integrate uh, in-person and um, electronic meetings appropriately. But at this point in time, we don't have a platform that we wish to change to. Therefore, we don't have any budget um, allocated to it. Okay, can I? Yeah. Add yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Um, I just want to say that that I think um, these amendments are, are very timely and uh, they give us a lot of flexibility. And I think flex as, as the uh, report points out, flexibility that will be used useful, not just in cases if uh, COVID restrictions um, loosen up a little bit, just uh, in clement weather and other, um, other eventualities. The only thing that I think we need to be sensitive to is that if there are members uh, for members of the public or members of the committee or staff members who don't have good internet service. We need to somehow assess that, I think, uh, to make sure that there's equal access. Sure. Yeah, good point. Are there further uh, comments to this, uh, to this resolution? I failed to get a mover and seconder. Is there a mover and seconder for the resolution? Uh, Vice Deputy Mayor and Carr. All right, uh, discussion, then I'll ask all in favor. That's good. All right, that moves then to the second report, which is a staff report on the Douglas Point decommissioning request to intervene. And there is a resolution that council authorized the mayor to submit a request to intervene at the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission public hearing regarding the decommissioning of the Douglas Point waste facility. Is there a mover and seconder for the resolution? Moved by the deputy mayor, seconded by Councilor Carr. Questions or comments uh, to the resolution? Councilor Grace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I have two questions. Um, I wondered if the questions or the comments um, that you would be presenting, um, are they unique to us or is this something that would be, is there a similarity in the, um, uh, the comments that would be made that um, would be similar to questioning from regional municipalities? They are unique to us. They came from me. Uh, and, uh, and if you have, uh, if council has other things it would like to raise, I'm open to those things as well. These are just the concerns that I have or the necessary concerns, but the comments I would like to make. Council Grace. So my next question then would be the, um, uh, ensuring that the decommissioning plan recognizes and accommodates for local landfill capacity when it comes to disposing of conventional waste materials from the facility. Um, is this something that you're expressing concern for um, the municipality of Concordon, or is this something that you think may end up uh, drifting into our landfill? I don't believe that, I, at least it's not legal for us to accept landfill from the municipality in Carden in our landfill now. We can't accept waste from other municipalities. I am, and I think the town of Saugeen Shores has a concern in preserving regional landfill capacity in that uh, there are agreements uh, that 
um, should a number of municipalities run out of landfill capacity, that uh, then we might have to work together to find landfill capacity for those municipalities, which would come at a cost to Saugeen Shores taxpayers. So in my view, um, the preservation of landfill capacity in the municipality of Concordia is of interest to the people of the town of Saugeen Shores. Thank you. Is there uh, further questions or comments to the resolution? Seeing none, all in favor? It's carried. All right, and that moves us on to bylaws. And there are uh, three bylaws there for consideration. Does anyone wish to draw one out for in, or any one of them out for individual consideration? I don't see any requests to do that, so I'll read the resolution. It's uh, moved that the following bylaws are hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this 13th day of October, 2020. 1-65-2020 being a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement with the Victorian Order of Nurses. 2-66-2020 being a bylaw to establish 0.3 meter reserves on plan 3M234 as part of public highways. And 3-67-2020 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meetings of the corporation of the town of Saugeen Shores. Is there a mover and second? Moved by Schreider, seconded by the deputy mayor. Questions or comments to any of the bylaws? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. And that then finally moves us on to adjournment and I have a resolution of this regular meeting of uh, October 13, 2020, hereby adjourns at 7.22 p.m. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by Mayette, seconded by Carr. All in favor, we stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. Have a good evening.